first just start with like, who are you? Well, my name is Hafsa Ahmed. I am a Hamilton student, a senior in biology, and um, I'll be graduating with the class of 2024. Nice. I'm also um, a general student worker here, which is rare since we have a lot of interns at the FRC currently. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so, what is your food story? My food story, for the most part, being in, being an East African kid, it's kind of interesting because, like, I feel like this is common with a lot of non European dishes. It's like you come to school one day bringing a pack. It's like, I remember coming to school one time, so my mom was like, I'm going to pack you guys lunch for once. Because mm -hmm. normally we'd come home and we'd eat our, we call it the second lunch, where we're like, anything we didn't eat from the school period, like, we'd come home and best believe there's going to be like a <laughs> plate of rice and some lamb on the side or goat. A meat and just like extra food because my mom did not believe that we were being fed in school. <laughs> um, so one time on a day to bring food, people would just stare at me awkwardly like, as I'm like eating with my hand. Like, like I washed my hand, but like it was not really common for people to eat with their hands. Right. I remember like in, it, it was in first grade, people were like, oh my god, she's eating with their hands. Like, so I felt so embarrassed to the point where I had to get a spoon because <laughs> I didn't want to be stared at. But, um, if it's not just the food, it's also just like the mannerisms of eating food. I feel like for me, culturally, whenever we eat food, we eat food, especially for my family, we eat it together mm -hmm. as a big meal um, and when we're not busy, of course. And we all like eat with our hands. Like sometimes we'd have uh, like utensils, but for the most part, it's like a community event. It's not really like an individual event. Um, like the most prevalent food I can think of in my head are probably two meals, which is um, pasta which is kind of basic, but it depends on how you make it for every culture. Mm. Um, my mom specifically would make <laughs> pasta and she'd add like a lot of oil to the sauce and it ended up becoming very dry instead of like the watery consistency that a lot of people are used to. And so it would like stick well with the pasta so the flavor mm. would last longer. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then my dad would be the one who would make rice oftentimes. And I just remember like that was our signal to come inside every time in the summer when we were like kids. So you could smell the rice coming out of the window oh. um, with like, he make rice specifically um, in the small tradition of like, um, you cook meat first so you can get the broth from it and then you separate the fats and all the other stuff, excess from the broth. Um, and then you save half of it because most of it is going to be used later on when you cook, boil the rice and it's cooked well enough, you use broth to flavor the rice and add a lot of other spices, um, potatoes are added and then you reuse the meat into the rice so it's all together and you just put it in the oven and that's how you cook it. That's awesome. Do you have like specific lunches that you brought that like come to mind? Um, there hasn't been specific lunches that I bring. Oftentimes, the real like event of when we would make like Somali food is like during Ramadan. Oftentimes, um, that's like when everyone has enough time, or we just find enough time to cook meals. Cause I feel like traditionally or me like those meals do are taxing and they do like cost a lot of energy to make a lot of time um to make like samosas and we call them um bur, which is like this like bread that you eat with the samosa on the side they're kind of like shaped similar so they're like mm -hmm. i would say two halves of soulmate like some people like to eat them together i personally don't because mm -hmm. the bread itself is too sweet but it's like fried bread and okay. like gets aired out in the middle it's really um it's really nice um have like a lot of rice a lot of meat a lot of like fruits that come out of the kitchen when <laughs> it was like close to sundown for Ramadan that's like the time when people really sat together but now that it's shifted earlier from summer it's like hard for people to get together because it's like in March and April and people are busy and kids have school so it's we do try to make those meals all the time but it's not the same way as like I remember when Ramadan used to be in July or something um, oftentimes I would just get food from the FRC or like my sister would have like leftover alfredo that she makes or something and her alfredo is so spicy <laughs> like that's one of the complaints that our family makes sometimes that we kind of gotten used to we've gathered a spice tolerance because uh -huh. she'd always add so much chili pepper into her <laughs> alfredo which you're thinking like how does chili pepper work in alfredo i don't know it just works <laughs> mm -hmm. do you have like a favorite recipe i would say I would say my favorite recipe okay I have, I have two but there's one I can recite from the top of my head okay so two of my favorite recipes one of them would definitely have to be upside down pineapple cake because the way my mom makes it and my sister as well 
is um, she would add like condensed milk at the bottom mm -hmm. that would sit with the ups upside down pineapple cake. So it would have like that moist, sweet texture at the bottom on top of the pineapple and everything. Wow. And she would add like canned cherries on top of it. I just remember vividly growing up with that a lot. That sounds really good. <laughs> it is. Um, another is um, mostly tiramisu. Like I grew up with a lot of tiramisu for my family. Um, and it's like a common Somali staple dessert for us. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like this winter break whipping up a lot of tiramisu in the kitchen. Like it just, it was taxing, but it was worth it. And mm -hmm. it's really simple. So all you'd have to do is buy probably, they're called like, I don't know. They're called champagne cookies. Like these, these long biscuits okay. that have like a layer of sugar on top. And so you can find on the side of the instructions of the cookies. I like to find it because on some websites, especially if you type of like Somali tiramisu, they have their own ingredients of it. Oftentimes tiramisu people would put like um, liquor of some sort in it. I don't because I don't really drink or eat alcohol at all. But what I would do is I would, first you grab the cream cheese. Um, you can use like any kind of cream cheese, but there's a specific cheese, if I remember correctly. I had mascarpone? Mars Mark, I can't even say it. <laughs> all I know is that when I see it, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I take the Mark Mark's Capone cheese. Normally I get like two containers just in case, but one container is enough for like a small pan of it. You take it, you put it in um, the pot as it's getting mixed with the other ingredients, such as like um, the sugar. I believe there was some milk. No, no, it was a lot of egg whites. A lot of egg whites. That's how you get it very fluffy. So first you do. You grab a bunch of eggs, I'm pretty sure it was like around three to four eggs. You mostly use the egg whites for them, and you just whip it until it's very fluffy, and that's when you add the cheese. That's what I like to do, personally. Because then, it makes it very creamy and very fluffy, as you add like the whipping cream after that, and it's just like this very airy, but also like very creamy, like I would say almost frosting-like, because it kind of reminds me of frosting, but at the same time, ice cream. Yeah. And then I would take it, and after that I would get the espresso I'd get on the side, because you have to make sure you have your coffee. That's like the, thing was like the cement, you're building something. So I would, sometimes you can just put the, a layer of espresso in the pan. I oftentimes just like to dip the cookies by hand, because I like to make life harder for me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I would fit them geometrically, and if they didn't, some of them were gonna have to get snapped <laughs> to fit in the sides. Um, and then I would like layer it with the cream frosting layer um, and then you just do it again where you add coffee to the biscuits and you lay them down and then you do it once more I mean you can add two layers but if you have like two marcapone like cans on top of a lot of extra whipping cream and a lot of ex extra biscuits you can make like four layers or something how you stack it up is up to you and also the type of pan you're having mm -hmm. um, sometimes at the end of it I like to separate the the frosting as they call it for tiramisu on the edges, I like to separate it with like a spatula or something and then add extra espresso on the side oh, okay. to give it a little good soak and then you put it in the fridge overnight or for at least six hours or four, or you can put it in the freezer for two hours, works efficiently. Um, you pop it right out and there it is. I like to add a little, um, so I like to get the strainer and grab the Hershey cocoa and just add a little cocoa on top oh, nice. <laughs> and be a little extra with it, yeah. That's really cool. I just grew up with a lot of tiramisu, like my mom would make that all the time. But she'd only make it for guests. <laughs> so he knew someone was coming to the house the day she started <laughs> making the <Tiramisu. tiramisu>. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like the one food that if it was finished, it was definitely my fault. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I guess my last question would be like, what made you start working at that first day? Um, In all honesty, I was pushed to work here by Wesley since the Wesley Center has overseen um, the FRC and all of its affairs but for the most part what made me stay because I did have an option to stay here a lot of it was the community and also just the reasons of why we do what we do mm -hmm. I am definitely not new to the idea of or to I'm definitely not new to the concept of unsustainable sources of food or food instability in general um, I've I've dealt with it a few times, especially as a college student. It's mm -hmm. definitely more common and very prevalent among students to have to deal with food instability, or sometimes if not hunger, from the lack of resources. Food instability is not something new to a lot of college students. I am one of them who've seen it. Um, and I really do believe in 
believe in feeding people because I feel like hunger should like should not be the reason why people don't do a lot of things in life, don't succeed or face a lot of issues or surrounding food to begin with. Food should be able to be accessible for everyone, to be honest. Um, whether that means giving it for free or having programs like this that allow people to get it within arm's reach. I appreciate just all like, the work you do. It's great. I mean, to be honest, I'm just, um, I guess, a pawn in the larger game of the FRC. As you can see with the wall here, you know, they, yeah. there's a lot of people that have really put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, Anthony, who was the class of 2023, 20, uh, mm -hmm. um, he was like him, Uga, um, who's also class of 2023, they were really the people that got me in the FRC, introduced the concept to me. I feel like a lot of it is just a generational thing. Like if the people, like seniors or juniors, don't introduce this, or at least give this space to freshmen and sophomores to be like, hey, this is a place for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one's going to find it. Right. And I really should be thanking them and the people who came before them for this place to begin with.